This year I had, let's say, the opportunity to attend a school assembly in a public school put on by the Strength Team. Now, the Strength Team's website under its Beliefs tab says some things like, We believe the Bible to be the inspired, the only infallible, authoritative Word of God. We believe that there is one God, eternal, existent in three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We believe in the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ, His virgin birth, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's all on the website, which I will link below. Um, in, in addition to this, uh, let's see, they're under their... Um, how it works tab they say school assemblies uh, about school assemblies by tailoring each assembly toward elementary middle and high school students we can literally reach every family in your community we use these to invite students to our evening evangelistic events where we share the message of jesus christ last year over 1000 assemblies were given what these guys do is they go into these school assemblies and they're all like uh, former professional athletes, uh, either football players or bodybuilders or uh, things like that. And they go and they perform these little tricks like uh, blowing up a water bo hot water bottle and bl you know, blowing it up or um, bending steel rods and some stuff like that. They go in doing that sort of thing to get kids' attention and then they... Um, lace those little acts throughout their long speeches about uh, how they got their lives together and uh, they found purpose in their lives. And they, they put off as, as borderline secular of a message as they possibly can, but they slip in these little nuggets about uh, their religion. And the whole time, you know, every five minutes, they coax them into saying, oh, we'll be at this church tonight, and all, all week we'll be at this church, and you can come see us, and we're going to do all kinds of more demonstrations. We're going to do this and this and this. Um, and obviously, they uh, do this with the intention of getting people to go from the public school to a church to come see more of these little cool tricks. And once they get them in a church, obviously, like they said, they are there to spread their evangelistic message, which I think is um, blatantly dishonest. It's misleading to children, um, which I take personal issue with. Now, the uh, quote I wrote down when these people were in my building went as follows. Uh, you are not an accident. Nobody in this gym is an accident. Somebody created each of you with an important purpose. Now, it disturbs me when creationists equate a world without God to an existence where all things are accidental. It doesn't so much disturb me because I find the idea of an ungoverned existence frightening, or even that they don't understand that an ungoverned existence doesn't equate to one with no order, rules of probability, and or basic structure, you know, like natural laws. The truly disturbing part of that false equivalency is the scientific ignorance that makes creationists blind to their own irony. Their position of God creating us as we are today and the planet six to eight thousand years ago requires them to consider a myriad of individually clarified pieces of scientific evidence from multiple disciplines to be circumstantial and accidental. It's the creationist position that requires it to be an accident or a coincidence that the chimpanzee and human genomes are more than 98% identical and that fossils from around the world have been independently discovered, dated, and studied contradicting biblical claims about earth age and species development. It's they who believe that the earth dating techniques, including carbon, dendrochronology, amino acid racemization, uh, palomagnetic, and others performed by separate scientists in separate locations, consistently yield remarkably similar results about the age of our planet. Uh, they just happen by accident. Uh, they all must be flukes, right? All the, the earth dating and all those independent studies must be flukes. Now, adversely, all of that evidence makes perfect sense as a cause-effect relationship with the span of time reflective of our Earth's actual age here where I live in reality. Um, the overwhelming similarities between humans and other primates as well as the presence of vestigial structures like tail bones and appendix, that makes perfect sense when accepting evolution for the factual explanation that it is. A natural selection has explained the series of causes and effects for the documented changes in a variety of species, including ourselves, and to believe that we were created just as we are today, all stemming from a single pair of people six to eight thousand years ago, would require all that evidence to be the result of some accident rather than a well-explained series of events. 
They must also believe that their God intentionally or accidentally designed us with a tailbone we don't need, an organ that just sits inside of us waiting to burst, inadequate knee cartilage, dangerously narrow birth canals, and an immune system far too weak to fend off the viruses which for some reason he blessed with an observable ability to evolve. Now, the ungoverned series of cutthroat trial and error that is natural selection also accounts for the obvious existence of flaws such as psychopaths and sociopaths who gain pleasure from the misery of others or are literally incapable of human empathy. Those varieties of people are understandable for a race of slowly evolving primates. However, if we're attributing their design to an all-loving God who wants all of his creations to perform according to his perfect standard and eventually ascend to heaven, we must file them under the accident category. It's either that or the important specific purpose God created them for was to murder and torture other people until society brought their actions to a halt through imprisonment, therapy, or death. I think the strength team needs a new angle.